Hello and welcome to this overview of the Options Greeks, brought to you by Passing Score, where you can now ask all of your finance and accounting questions at our new PassingScoreForum.com. In this video, we'll be going over the main Greek letters that are used in describing the relationships of an option value. And you'll find that these mirror the Black-Scholes pricing model. They're the same components that make up our pricing. It's just the relationship of each individual component to the option value. So let's take a look at our first one, which is Delta. And this is the relationship between the underlying asset, and we'll use stocks in our examples here, and the uh, movement in the option value. Uh, mathematically, this is the partial derivative of the call price with respect to the underlying assets. In our example, our stock price in the market, we see that it moves up a dollar. And at the same time, we see that our option price has increased by 0.78. So what we've observed is a delta of 0.78, a description of the correlation between the two assets. And these will range uh, from negative 1 to 0 for a long put or a short call, or from 0 to 1 for a long call or a short put. So we can see it's the same ranges as we have for a correlation uh, between two uh, items. Some other important points about delta is that delta is definitely not fixed. It moves around along with the market. Uh, depending on a lot of factors, uh, interest rates, uh, the change in prices. And as that stock price increases, we tend to have an increase in delta as well. Uh, there's a lot of correlation between that uh, relationship. If we map out our delta at any given point, we don't find that it's a straight line. It tends to curve. And a lot of this uh, relationship will have to do with uh, how in or out of the money it is, uh, time to expiration, and other factors that affect the option. Uh, deltas can be applied with uh, forwards as well as options, and European and American options. Uh, this is often used for hedging purposes. We can use our options to uh, hedge the value of a given number of stocks. And we can do this in a dynamic sense, uh, constantly rebalancing to get the delta, uh, to account for the changes in the delta, or static. It will take delta at a certain point and then set it and forget it, just let it go, which reduces the effectiveness of the over time as delta moves away from where we set our hedge, but is much less expensive than constantly rebalancing with a dynamic, dynamic hedge. Uh, next, we have theta, and this is the amount that the option value will change with respect to the decrease in time to maturity. And this is measured in days. So we're going to take our results and divide by the number of trading days to get to our daily change in value of the option over time. Theta is negative, so we're constantly losing value in our option as we get closer to our expiration time. And theta is very uh, small as we were far away from the expiration. It's close to zero. Uh, if we have a one-year leap, for example, it's going to lose very little value in those first days. But that uh, theta, that loss in value, will increase rapidly as we get closer to our expiration date. Next, we have gamma. And this is how much that delta will move with respect to the underlying asset or the stock price. And again, mathematically, we saw that delta is the partial derivative. And for gamma, it's the second partial derivative or the rate of change of the rate of change of the option value with respect to the underlying asset, our stock. A small gamma means that delta is changing slowly, and a large gamma means that our delta is moving very quickly. And an important point to remember for investing purposes is that gamma tends to peak uh, when the option is at the money. So it can slide in value up and down as we're going into and out of the money. Next, we have vega, which is not really a Greek letter, and that 
character was chosen more because it looks like a V. It's actually new, but that's a, a side note. Uh, what Vega is, is the change in option value with respect to the volatility of our stock. A high Vega means that our option value is very sensitive and will move around a lot uh, when there's volatility in the stock. And our option value tends to increase when we have an increase in volatility. And this is uh, as a component of the Black-Scholes formula. As that volatility number goes up, uh, that's a bigger component of our option value, which will also go up. And of course, it will decline when volatility uh, declines as well. The more time that we have remaining on our option, the higher the potential for changes, which means that we have a higher vega and a more option value. And as we saw uh, with theta, as our uh, time remaining goes down, our possibility of different uh, prices will decrease, our volatility potential will decrease, and we'll have a decrease in the option value. And next is rho. And another component of our Black-Scholes model is the risk-free rate. So interest rates are part of the relationship uh, with our option value. As interest rates increase, we'll have a rise in call values and a decline in put values. When interest rates decline, we'll have just the opposite. Call values decline and put values rise. This is not a very strong relationship, so it would take a very significant increase or decrease in interest rates in order to have a significant value on our options. And that's it for our overview of the Greeks. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at john at passingscorefinance.com or ask any questions at passingscoreforum.com where we take care of all of our accounting and finance queries. And thank you for listening.